Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know, this is Guilty Movie Pleasures. In-depth discussion on movies, no matter how guilty they make you feel. Ooh, there it is. Hit the drums. Come on, Josh. Uh, little snare. Now, you know this song a lot better than I do. This is the end credit song for this week's movie on Guilty Movie Pleasures. The Weird Al Yankovic one and only classic directed by his buddy. This is UHF. Channel 62, coming in hot. We are in between Conan the Librarian and Wheel of Fish. Uh, today's episode of Guilty Movie Pleasures, if you notice to my left, is usually Ben Begley, but today I've got my good friend, host of uh, DC All Access Wrestling No, 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 DC Movie News. DC Movie News. DC All Access, totally different oh, show. That's, that's Tiffany's show. That's yeah, my bad. sure is. My bad. My I bad. didn't get that one. Very, very funny stand-up <laughs> comic and one of my best friends in the whole world, the pride of the Lehigh Valley, and wearer of a UHF t-shirt, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny LaCosta. Oh, it's good to be here, and allow me to apologize up front for the audience, uh, uh, it's not easy to follow Alicia Malone and Mary the Jedi and the movie Showgirls, but I'll be damned if we're not going to do it right now with UHF. Well, listen, you know, UHF, uh, I mean, before we go into UHF real quick, uh, you know, Ben Begley is away. Uh, he's been away the last couple weeks. He is shooting his first feature film that he wrote, uh, and he and his wife wrote together. He and his lovely wife, Renee, wrote together. Amazing. It's called Funhouse Massacre. They're in Ohio shooting it right now. Uh, I've seen some set photos, and they've got some good press uh, from the actual shoot so far, so congratulations, Ben. And and uh, in the, after he shoots that, he'll also be shooting his sequel to Cloudy with a Chance of Love with It's Still Cloudy, But There's Still a Chance of Love. All right. <laughs> Is that really a thing? He was uh, star- he started in a Hallmark movie called, oh! called called something like that. Insert love. Love love on the rocks. Love and meatballs, I think it is. <laughs> love and meatballs. That, yeah. There you go. So, Ben, we miss you. We'll see you soon. Uh, again, congratulations. And But, dude. We- I got to tell you. We I can, we can cut the song. It's all right. Yeah, UHF <laughs> is beyond my favorite. I think favorite Alexis is really loving this song. It's a great song. Yeah. It's Weird Al just rocking out. 1989. Uh, I I love this movie so much that when you asked me, hey, do you want to be on Guilty Movie Pleasures? Because I love the show. Mm, thanks, love man. you. And I was like, well, could we talk about UHF? <laughs> and when you said yes, like I I became like a dude from Boston. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God! I finally get to. Wait, you're gonna let us do it? Hey, Tommy! I get to talk about UHF on a, on a platform on the interwebs. Like I flipped out because I've never had a chance to talk about UHF and my love for this film in front of the public. Yeah. So you, I, you know, I mean, I, I, you suggested it, and it's this is a. Cl- I mean, I, do you remember the first time you saw the movie? Oh God, yeah. I actually okay. didn't see it uh, in theaters. I was only like. I was really little when it me, came out. Yeah, me too. Five, six. I was a couple years older than that, perhaps. Yeah. But I was, <laughs> I was young enough. And uh, I, the first time I actually saw it was, um, and you're both also a Pennsylvanian. Yeah. Uh, the illegal cable. Oh yeah, the, the hot box. box. Yeah. I flipped that little black switch. Yeah. Bam. UHF yeah. came on. Damn. And That's then a... we also taped it on VHS. Oh, of course you did. Mm-hmm. My uh, the first time I ever saw it, we were at my aunt Elsa's. She lived in D.C. She's my grandmother's sister. Gotta love A.E. And she was great. She was mm-hmm. an awesome woman, and she had this basement area that my brother and I slept in and stayed down there and she had all the illegal channels because she didn't have any kids well she didn't have any kids Ben in my age she had older kids that already graduated high school and college and were out of the house nice. so we went to visit and she had every pay channel because her husband was a scumbag <laughs> not, not like scumbag but he loved yeah. like the nudie stuff there were no child protection no, those. nothing in that so we're, we're down there and UHF comes on and my brother and I I mean we're five seven eight years old whatever I I don't think I'd laugh that hard in my life when Conan the Librarian came out and Conan the Librarian Librarian to this day is one of the funniest friggin' gags in the history of movies. I love Conan the Librarian. But from start to and finish, it's so obvious. you're so, giggling from you, start to finish. It's a giggle movie. Because it's, okay, it's not as slapsticky as Naked Gun or no. like Top Secret or Johnny Dangerously. Those are, those are a, an airplane. Those are a punch every or minute. Hot of, shots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is an actual like story with a plot mm-hmm. that has. 
you know, a lot of the stories are very likable with less jokes, but when the jokes hit, they absolutely destroy. They destroy, and it also keeps you on your toes the whole time. You're constantly looking for the next gag or the yes. next joke. Yes. And this movie inspired me so much uh, in, in what I do now. Yeah. And let's give everyone your favorite line from Conan the Librarian. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I believe we have the sound clip. Oh, I wanted you to imitate Before it. Before we let it go... You don't know the Dewey Decimal System. He's Conan, the librarian. <laughs> Do we have, we have that clip? Right? So like, much it's, fun. It's, God. Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And every time, I mean, after I watched uh, this movie, I would walk into the library. I went to Baker Elementary School just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I don't remember our librarian's name, but she was kind of an older woman. But she was actually kind of nice, as opposed to most librarians that are stereotypically portrayed in movies movies as old spinsters sexually right? frustrated sexually frustrated always shing people yeah. but when we were learning the dewey decimal system i would if people messed up i would always turn to them <laughs> and just and just say this don't you know the dewey decimal system and then he chops the dude in half when he's got a late i mean i'm telling you it's such an obvious gag but it works so friggin well and right from the start of the movie there's a uh a, um a indiana jones <laughs> what do you want to call it a dream sequence a, if you will a, a spoofy dream sequence yeah yeah a daydream sequence right yeah. from the beginning when the guy backs away and gets run over by a train you're like <laughs> i know what i'm in for and it's going to be the greatest 90 minutes ever god and it, and it you know a lot of comedies now go on too long i think they they mm -hmm. feel a little extended. I don't want to throw. I love Judd Apatow movies, but some of his movies of late have been just a little long. And he's kind of typically known for longer movies. But sure. the, these the slapstick kind of movies and these spoof movies or whatever you want to, however you want to. I feel like UHF is almost in a in a realm by itself, almost in a genre by itself because it it it's a comedy, it's a spoof, it's it's slapstick, but it's also very uh, honest, very yeah. character driven. You great, know? It's got a great heart. It's got a great heart to the movie. Yeah. And uh, an hour and a half, is that's just plenty. That's all you need. That's all, all you need. not forget, I mean, it had two people who became megastars. Yeah. Besides Weird Al. Yeah. We're talking Fran Drescher, Fran Drescher and Michael Richards before anyone really knew who they were, right. per se. Right. And Fran Drescher, my God, she, she looked, looked good. amazing in this. She had one, When she went the first day to report the news, because that was her <laughs> thing, and she wearing that bared midriff dress. I mean, just a strikingly attractive woman with awful Elaine Bennis hair. Pamela Finkelstein. Ugh, just gorgeous. And then Michael Richards, I was telling you before, before this, he was well known. If you, if you watch any of the early Carson mm -hmm. He's on Carson a bunch of times. He's on Ed's. I mean, he's he's doing some late night stuff, and he was Carson's fitness guru. Oh God! If you guys go and look up Michael Richards on on Carson, he does these fitness guru things, but it's him just doing prat falls, trying to lift weights, I love and that. it's incredible. Like he'll come out with the newest workout machine of the day and show Carson how to use it, and then inevitably hurt himself. <laughs> it's really good, and he's adorable in this movie. Oh, he's incredible. He's absolutely perfect. Uh, okay, you know we usually do the the plot of this movie in yeah. under five minutes, and then we'll go into just the meat and potatoes of how much we love it obviously I don't think we need five minutes what do you think we do in three I think so do you think we do in three yeah I mean, we can go three we can also do two if you want we got five seconds to make a decision let's go challenge it let's go two two alright in two one, go. Okay, uh, George Newman is a well-to-do um, kind of an idiot who just well can't to seem do? to keep a job. He's yeah, not well-to-do at well, all. He's doing, okay, he's doing the best he can. <laughs> Victoria Jackson is Terry. That's his girlfriend. He can't seem to hold a job. Well, there. Uh, then again, he has an uncle who um, who who likes playing poker, and right. he wins the deed to Channel 62 at UHF station, which no longer is in, in existence. Right. And there, he's talking to his wife, and he's like, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, no, no one even watches this crap. Give and it then, to George. So the aunt convinces him to give it to George. George George has just been fired from the burger world. Uh, he and his best bud go to go to the UHF. Uh, it's Channel 62. Yep. They're just playing old reruns. A, a weird scientific guy is running the place, and they decide to try and start doing new programming, but nobody's picking up on it. Nothing's doing. And so the station is about to go under. Yep. Station is about to go under. Uh, George gets really, really depressed. Terry breaks up with him because he forgets to meet her out at dinner. He goes to a bar. He just lets Stanley Spadowski, a.k.a. Michael Richards, the uh, just, just on air live. And then by the time they get to the bar, Stanley Spadowski killing it with these kids. They're yeah. loving him. Stanley Spadowski's One clubhouse. Minute. Everyone's going crazy. Yeah. And then uh, then all of a sudden, he starts uh, pulling some ratings. He starts pulling some ratings. And Channel 62 starts beating Channel 8, which is oh. run by R.J. Fletcher, the ultimate villain. Son of a bitch. Who has a bunch of hen henchmen. 
Yeah. And uh, he, he doesn't think that, U- that Channel 62 is ever going to be his competition, but the ratings come in and they're number one. In town. In town. Which there's never a mention of a town. We don't know what the town nope. is. But this movie, but whatever. So, uh, uh, R.J. Reynolds or R.J. Fletcher decides to take him on himself to take over yep. sixty-two, and they kidnap Michael. They kidnap Stanley Spadowski, and all of a sudden they're having a, a telethon because it turns out um, his uncle Harvey lost a whole bunch of money gambling, needed seventy-five thousand dollars to pay off Big seconds. Louie. They had to do a um, a telethon, but there's no uh, Stanley Spadowski. So Weird Al uh, turns into Rambo and goes out to find him. They find him. They come back. They raise enough money. They pay off Big Louie. R.J. Fletcher is thwarted and. And the, the, the channel is saved, and everyone loves it, and everyone goes home happy. We did it! Oh, man, two minutes. There we go. Johnny LaCosta, everybody. Don't put him in a corner. Nobody puts LaCosta in a corner. LaCosta in a damn corner. Uh, the, um, I, you know, in this movie, I love, we, and we talked about it, is that it must have been so much fun to sit around and write the fake commercials yes. for the show. Okay? Um, you have... My favorite is how it starts. I mean, the channel is not doing well, and you still have these brilliant commercials. You have Crazy Eddie. Oh yeah, who's gonna beat a seal? He's a car for dealer. a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my my dad's a car dealer, and everybody thought my dad was Crazy Eddie. What's your dad's real name? John. Crazy John. <laughs> He's not crazy, but he did have a bunch of commercials, which is really funny. I love that. Um, then you have Spatula City, uh-huh. which is genius. Spa- spatula City. Mm. Just go with Spatula City for a little bit. Buy nine spatulas, get the tenth one for just one penny. They make great Christmas presents. <laughs> and what better way to say, I love you, than with the gift of a spatula. <laughs> and then the, the end jingle is, Spatula City, City we sell spatulas. That's and it. that's all. <laughs> that's all. <Boo-doo-doo. laughs> And then, of course, you have the president. Like, they spoof so many great things in pop culture of that era where you have the the guy, Cy Greenblum, who's like, Hi, this is Cy Greenblum, president of Spatula City. I like the spatula so much, I bought the company. I mean, come on. That's gold. It's beautiful. I mean, come on. Uh, and come then on. you have... Uh, you have um, What's the other? The, there's the third advertisement of. Well, there's Conan the Librarian. No, so there's Conan the Libra- Librarian. Gandhi two. Gandhi two. That's my favorite. <laughs> Go with the Gandhi two. Oh boy, Gandhi two. Which actually, Gandhi was played by Jay Levy, who's the director, writer, and co-writer. Yeah. yeah. Um, next week on U sixty two, he's back. <laughs> this time he's pissed <laughs> Gandhi too no more Mr. Passive Resistance he's out to kick some butt and he, he pulls up and it was it a Ferrari <laughs> it's that old 80s Ferrari and it's incredible and he just starts beating the crap out of someone then they go <laughs> but he also knows how to party <laughs> he's got two chicks on his arm <laughs> and he walks into that restaurant and then the other guys come to take and he just takes out to everybody with the machine gun that got his carrying. but before that they they get a joke in even about his diet because he did he was not a meat eater no yeah. and he goes give me a steak medium rare <laughs> yeah and then it turns into a scar face and uh-huh. Miami Club. There is uh, only one law. His law. <laughs> Gandhi 2. Oh, man. And that's like, you know, for me, I was always such a big fan. And you've been on Between the Sheets Live before and Between yeah, the Sheets in the studio and everything. That's right. Uh, when we used to re- read the fake commercials off in the show, I loved doing that. Because like <sighs> writing fake commercials, fake movie trailers, anything like that has always just been a passion of mine. Mostly because it's, it's not very difficult to do. And you can pretty much do anything you want in a trailer. Yeah. Really. And that's the, that's one of the great parts about UHF is because it was a show within a show within a movie. It really was. And it told such it, it told a good story. Right. On top of the fact that the like you mentioned that a lot of movies like this of this genre, the acting would kind of take you out of it because mm-hmm. it wasn't necessarily good. But the performances in UHF were all fantastic and yeah. and Weird Al got some legends like Billy Barty, who played Noodles McIntyre, is, is arguably the most famous dwarf actor of all time, or yeah. one of the most famous. Um, and the name Noodles McIntyre. I mean, if my name wasn't Josh McCuga, I second would be Noodles McIntyre. Yeah. Actually, Macintosh. Oh, Macintosh. My yeah. bad. Pamela said Macintyre. Oh, that's why I said Macintyre. And Finkelstein. I got it wrong. Yeah, it's your bad. All good. Totally. Um, but UHF too. And listen, this may be a guilty movie pleasure for some people because it's uh, okay for me. It's not. No. But 
I think for I think for a lot of and this is going to be so stereotypical to say, but I feel like and we said everything that girls a lot of girls wouldn't like this movie that much. I think they would be afraid to like it. Like it's the kind of movie that keeps us giggling throughout, but yeah. it's the kind of movie where like right from that opening scene, a lot of girls would watch and just be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I can't believe we're laughing at something so immature. But it's amazing. But it's it really is perfect cinema. Um, what's uh I guess. If you could pick any plot holes, could you find a plot hole, or did we even like? Are there are there any in this movie that would even? How dare I even consider that? Yeah. Other than the fact that maybe the only plot hole, even though it plays into the comedy, is the fact that they in in the ten minutes it takes them to leave the station to go to a bar, their station's the number one station in all of town. That would be well, the no, only... no, no. It wasn't the number one. It was just Stanley Spadowski was crushing it so hard, and people in a bar were watching for those ten minutes. Yes, like, hey, it's back on the air, and then they like, they flip well, it up. The the bartender the bartender is going like, yeah, you'll never believe it. It's on TV. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A little bit of a plot hole there. Um, but, also, the fact that a news station would consider kidnapping someone. Yes. <laughs> I guess, I guess, if we're going to split hairs. Right. And if the, the you know, the R.J. Fletcher character oh, is, so good. is so intense that he has henchmen all over the place. As an, as again, as a as a channel operator, as a network I mean, executive, I guess they have jobs, but we don't really find out what their jobs ever yeah. are. Besides his son, you know what is is, is kind of underrated that we don't talk about that often is being a henchman yeah. in in a crew. All you do is kind of just sit around and play cards and just you know yap yap about a bunch. It doesn't seem like that hard of a job, but but you got to do a good job. Yeah, you do, or else you know. Shit gets real and you get your ass kicked. <laughs> These henchmen were great. You, you, you get like two or three lines. You got to make them count. Yeah. And my favorite, and you talked about, is is the staple gun scene. Oh, God. Where the guy, Stanley Spadowski, starts firing staple guns behind him and, and it lands in Homeboy's face. <laughs> and like as <laughs> he's like talking to Stanley and Stanley's picking him off his face. <laughs> he's like, Stanley, be nice. And that's when he notices the mop. Yeah. Oh, we forgot about the mop. Well, the mop plays a central character in this sure movie. Sure does. Um, and Stanley, I, listen, if you're a UHF fan, you never look at a mop the same way again after nope. you've seen this movie. Nope. And I think for a lot of our younger viewers, guys, again, when this came out, it didn't do that well in the box office. You know what, though? It had a really rough year. 1989, it came out in the summer in, July, I want to say, July 19th? Okay. Maybe July 21st. I okay. forget the exact date. But it was going up against Indiana Jones and I think two or three other blockbusters. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, you re releasing this movie in the summertime nowadays would never happen. Nope. This is like a January, February, March movie um, where, you know, a lot of these comedies that have soft releases or people aren't too excited about get mm -hmm. it. You know, like Get Hard with Chris Rock and or Chris... Did you see that? Will Ferrell. Eh, I didn't see it. Okay. I'll, I'll wait till video. But, um, you know... It's, comedies like that, that, that's when they would have been released then. But now, you know, like Weird Al Yankovic. But here's the thing. At that time, Weird Al Yankovic was a gigantic star. He still is. I mean, I, his album went platinum. Yeah. That doesn't happen anymore. He's a hero. Yeah. And he all, I mean, he made his career on cover songs. But there are a lot of comics out there that try cover songs. But there's no Weird Al Yankovic. No. July 21st, 1989. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Boom. God, greatest engineer in the history of engineers. Yep. I remember uh, on the 25th <laughs> Thank anniversary. You. You're welcome. <laughs> I remember on the 25th anniversary, I, I posted on social media and no one really knew what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> it really um, is. Uh, if you, if you, okay, it's kind of like for me, Wet Hot American Summer. Okay. Yeah. Love that movie. If I ask somebody and they've seen Wet Hot American Summer, page up in my book. Boom. Right. You've seen UHF? Turn another page. You're killing it. MacGruber, turn the third page. Those are my three favorite turn the page. slapsticky comedies, but aren't all slapstick. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, Naked Gun. Well, you, Naked... I, I think MacGruber was way more slapstick than UHF. You think? Oh, big time. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I did not buy MacGruber nearly as much as a lot of other people. Really? Maybe, maybe I need to see it again. Oh, man. But MacGruber's I remember seeing it in the theater just kind of a little bit annoyed. Really? Yeah, I feel uh, like it was... A, I watched it twice in the theater. I loved it. All right, it. I'll give it a second <laughs> shot. I mean, those are my three slapsticky, again... Yeah, she uh, agrees. Alexis concurs. Yeah, thank you. I, thank you, Alexis, for backing me up. Or, are you backing up Johnny or backing up me? Me, of course. Johnny. Sorry. Yay! Oh, what? It was yeah. very forced. Very forced humor. Almost like in the original uh, Hangover, I thought a lot of Galifianakis' jokes were not necessary. It was They were really forced. Who are you right now? I'm just saying. Look, I have no. I'm not judging. UHS is my favorite movie of all time. I'm just saying my humble opinion. 
Which you told me never to make never, an never say your opinion is humble. <laughs> I'm just, look, I'm just, you know, we can contrast. We'll fight after this. Listen, Maybe this we'll is fight the show the about show. UHF, but I'm very disappointed we'll slap in you. We'll box ourselves. I'll watch <laughs> it again. I'll watch it again. Anyway, but if, if you reference a UHF and somebody gets it, you're automatically a friend of my book. Best friends. Yeah. If you go to some, because you know, you go to some parties sometimes in LA, and maybe you're going there to meet a girl, and you don't really know any of her friends. Maybe there's like a hipster crew, and there's a couple other guys, and somebody's standing by the drink, and you see something that reminds you of a movie, mm -hmm. say UHF or MacGruber or Lebowski. whatever, American Summer, Lebowski, something like that, and you make a reference, somebody's like, ah, oh, good reference, yeah. right? You're like, all right, he's cool. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, you don't know the Dewey National System. Oh, man, it's just so good, and, and the movie makes me so happy, and, and I just think it's very, very underrated, and um, actually, it is a cult classic. We yeah. can call it that. Uh -huh. uh, Stanley Swadowski, the t-shirt he actually wears in most of the movie, you could actually find that online now. Really? Someone has recreated it, which is amazing. I was uh, I wanted to be Stanley Swadowski for Halloween the one year, Ooh. but um, I just stuck with Indiana Jones as my classic. Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, the, the suspenders, high pants with the mop, you could kill that at Halloween if you wanted to. I was going to say, yeah, I think you have to do it with someone, though. Someone has to be George if Newman. If still lived here, he could be your George Newman. Grow mm -hmm. out the mustache with the big curly hair. Where do you move? He moved to San Jose. He what? Yeah. We'll talk about that after. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, now on the line, we're talking about our young fans. A gentleman, uh, he is the he's the associate producer of the show. He runs all our social networks. Uh, last week, uh, we found out that he is uh, related to Chuck Norris, which is pretty cool. No way. And uh, he's, uh, he, he's never seen UHF until this morning when he watched it so he could call into the show. Oh, Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, Cody Norris. I mean, Cody Hall. What's up? Cody Hall. What's up, man? How's it going, good, guys? Good, buddy. How you doing? So do you hang up the phone now by jump kicking it? <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> good, good, good. So, Cody, you just watched this movie. Yep. Verdict. It about an hour ago. V verdict. Uh, it was pretty awesome, dude. Man. Yeah. I've never been a big Weird Al guy. Like, okay. I've never really got it. Yeah. But this was incredible. I loved it. Yes. See? See, I know every line by heart to where it's like I've imitated every single character in the film. So to hear someone brand new... Yeah. As young as you, watch it 25 years later. So introduce it to some of your younger friends there, Code. I know it's it's one of those ones, it's an, it's an 80s comedy, so it slips under the radar. But, you know, if you were going to describe it to one of your buddies, how would you sell it? I would sell it as a bunch of, like, awesome little skits. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, all the commercials and all that stuff. It yeah. was just really... It was really awesome. I loved it. That's good. That's good. Did you like the Did you like Conan the Barbarian? Conan the Librarian. The Librarian. Yeah, that was my favorite part. Where you guys already talked about that. So yes. the second one would probably be uh, the Wheel of Fish. Oh yeah, <laughs> forgot about yeah. that. Wheel of Fish. Stupid. <laughs> hey, Cody. He's like, he's like, you see what's in the box, and he's like, there's nothing. He's like, nothing. You stupid. He's like, what's wrong with you? I mean, there's like a poor great. old looking woman too. He kind of felt <sighs> bad about her. But Phyllis Weaver. So you weren't you weren't like a big Weird Al Yankovic fan going into the movie, but now that now that you've seen this, would, are you like more more inclined to go out and listen to some of his music? Yeah, I mean, I guess I get it now. Yeah, I've listened to some of his songs before, but I'll probably do some more research. I okay, guess. dude, if you have Spotify, look up the UHF soundtrack. It's phenomenal. Yeah, so Will many do. good songs. So many good songs. You know what's great too, Code and. We, we, the Stallone yells in a row that he does up in the chopper mm -hmm. really, really play well into the show with uh, the over the top yell, the Rocky three yell. The, I mean, it's really good. Uh, Alexis, could you play some Stallone yells? We can, we can maybe riff on and some Stanley's Stallone responses. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, that was the. Uh... That was actually the, the chopping of the... Oh, that was the chopping of the that finger. That was emo another classic scene. Yeah. <laughs> Just call me Mr. Butterfingers. <laughs> With the table saw. Wait, we have some still... We got the... It's like an extended clip. I think there's three yells, Alexis. It's like they're in a helicopter. Do you remember what you labeled it? Uh... <sighs> this is this. There yeah, is. here we go. Oh, <laughs> 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 it's just like three great Stallone yells from the, from the helicopter. Just, oh, just so good. Uh, Cody, if you were going to give this on a scale of one to five Stallone yells, I think this is pretty fitting. We haven't done this in a while. How many Stallone yells would you give it? I'll go solid four. Solid wow. four Stallone yells. All right, yeah. Cody. Now, Cody, what were your thoughts on seeing a young Fran Drescher and young Michael Richards? Well, uh, was, was Michael Richards this before Seinfeld? Way before. Seinfeld, I believe, okay. began in 92. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was years. weird. Yeah, I guess that's the first thing I've 
or the earliest thing I've seen from him, I guess, before Seinfeld, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the movie Problem Child? Did you ever see that movie? No. Okay, so he played a he played a serial killer in Problem Child, which again is weird because <laughs> it's supposed to be a comedy with John Ritter. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, and then how hot was Fran Drescher? <sighs> nice. Pretty hot, dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Cody bought it into the hot Fran Drescher. Cody, I'm really glad you enjoyed the movie, and uh, thanks for calling in as always. And uh, we'll, yep. we'll we'll send you out on some good Stallone yells when yep. you say it like this. <laughs> As Cody goes out to conquer his day. <laughs> All right, Cody, thanks for calling in, brother. We'll talk to you. No problem. Yeah. Later, buddy. Um, I love hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me very happy. Right? That that we've been able to pass on uh, this cinematic classic well, to the next generation. Well, that's the thing. Good comedy stands the test of time. You could watch any naked gun film right now. You could watch yep. Airplane. You could watch Hot Shots. Um, oh, I forgot about Hot Shots. Top Secret. Yeah. And UHF, I will put that in the category, they stand the test of time because funny gags and well-crafted jokes and misdirection will mm -hmm. never get old. I don't care what people say. I don't care how hip people want to get in 2015. Quit being so smart with your comedy. Just enjoy the, the, the juvenility of movies like this. Well, that's the thing, though. I think juvenility is smart, though. It's not always yeah. easy to put in those misdirection jokes and those gags. That's not an easy thing to do, necessarily. So I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I, I just... It's, it's a lost art now days and and i think maybe maybe because we've had 19 scary movies yeah. and and yeah. not another whatever the shit not another teen movie you know not another scary movie <sighs> indie flick what um yeah because those movies you know they they could have had they really taken on a cult classic sort of status yeah right but when we think about it, we, it we're kind of just glossing over an entire decade of spoof comedies. We don't even really... There, there's nothing to them. There's not really much greatness it's, about it's them. It's because they're churning them out like a factory. They just, okay, what's hot in pop culture? All right, let's write a movie really quick. Do you, think, do you think that's why Weird Al really never did another movie that, that was you know, at him at the helm? Or, or because this one did so poorly, they never gave him money anymore? I guess that'd be something to look into, but... I mean, I don't know how poorly it did. I don't know if it lost money or if it broke even. Yeah. I just think that... Al, where, you know, Al Yankovic's a true artist, and he made the movie he always wanted to make. Yeah. And I feel like it was maybe a bucket list thing. Mm. I mean, he's got enough money to where now he can make any movie he wants. Right. And, I mean, I feel it, maybe he's just the kind of guy that the movie-making process really didn't appeal to him. Because it can be hard. It can yeah. be really tough. That he just really enjoyed going on stage and playing his songs or making his music videos and making albums. And that was just something that he was more... I mean, this is all conjecture, but maybe that's just something that did. Because you talk to a lot of people, there's... You have one movie making experience and it all goes sour. You can be ruined for the rest of your career if you hate it. It could be. I mean, and who knows if he lost his ass on it. He was at peak popularity. It came out in 89. So right. that was after his even worse album where he was really um, at the peak of his um, uh, parodying Michael yeah. Jackson. It was before the he whole Nirvana thing. He was a Nirvana pop culture thing. icon at he that was. point. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I just think that it... True art stands the test of time, and I think that's what Weird Al realizes that, so there's no need to make another film. You know what also, and this just popped in my head, and not even a theory I was thinking of, but if he treated making a movie like being a one-hit wonder in mm -hmm. songs, do you know what I mean? Because he parodied so many songs that were sort of one-hit wonders, yeah. that he maybe was just playing a, a whole joke or a, 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 co a social commentary on movies. Like, listen, I'm going to make a movie that I'm going to put all my effort into and make perfect. And in our eyes, we love it. Yeah. It's fantastic. And it's a cult classic that he said, screw it. I'm one and done. It's awesome. He's like a f I mean, freshman at Kentucky. He's one and done. Right. How are you going to top teaching poodles how to fly? You can <laughs> Ah, Gigi. Oh, man. And super sad that he died during the filming of that. The actor that played him yeah. died during it. When they're both looking at the TV, that is an amazing part. Is when Where do we find this guy? Me. Me. I thought you hired him. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. <laughs> he manages to hijack the station. Oh, it's... And every... every uh, cable station or show they have to have an animal show yep. and the fact they can find the craziest guy to do the animal show it's fantastic i wonder how much of that was improv or how much of that they wrote i think they let him go i mean i think the scene obviously after the end where they're like going down the list of animals like four aardvarks three flamingos two porcupines three badgers he's like badgers badgers we don't need no badgers? stick oh there we go badgers we don't need no stinking badgers. 
And very fitting, uh, yeah. you know, with uh, the Wisconsin Badgers lo- losing last night in the uh, NCAA championships. I-, I believe after the game was over, I called one of my really good friends from Wisconsin. Uh, and I didn't want to gloat, but I won a lot of money on Duke. And uh, okay. I just I just said to her as we were as we were hanging up the phone. Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers. As a matter of fact, I can relate to that because I went the San Di- I went to the San Diego Zoo recently, oh, and they nice. had pandas, they had giraffes, oh, they gorgeous. had lions, and then I went to a section of the zoo where they had like some smaller animals. Mm-hmm. Where I did see a couple of porcupines, I saw um, I saw a couple of flamingos, um, but then th- there was this other animal there, and I was just like, badgers, badgers. We don't need no stinking badgers. I'm not paying for that. No. No. I, I'm not paying to see any Badgers. Hell no. You know, uh, a big Breaking Bad fan. Uh, but my least favorite character was Badger. Oh. And uh, I thought he was just kind of filler. And every time he came on screen, I thought to myself, Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking Badgers. And yeah. to follow up your point, hey, I look at it this way. Hey, if Honey Badger don't care, then... <laughs> Badgers? Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers. The passion behind the badgers really just is yeah. uh, something to behold. And there's so many amazing. Th- that's the thing is, if you like movies strictly for quotes, you can Ugh. remember for the rest of your life. You'll be satisfied with this film. There's so many yeah. amazing quotes. I mean, you and I together came up with 16 sound bites <laughs> yeah. ju- just for this episode. We're gonna, we have 10 more minutes to go. All we're doing is sound bites. I say just start playing them. Just, Alexis, got, just go for what it. What do we got next, Alexis? He's Conan, the library. Solid. Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> and play the Dewey Decimal part. Don't you know the Dewey Decimal system? <laughs> now, I, listen, uh, my mom was a school teacher, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a lot of books in her house, and she arranged them in the sequential order That's based on the Dewey Decimal system. Good old Mrs. McCoogs. And sometimes I would mistakenly put them in the wrong order and she would come in with a spatula from Spatula City mm. and threaten me with it saying Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Yeah. And I completely relate. I mean, back in the day, uh, I actually had a, a rather large librarian in my school. Oh, yeah. uh, not even make, not even making this up, her last name was Pigato. Oh, yeah, rather large. Tough. Rather yes. large woman and um, I wasn't much of a reader. The only time I would read is when um, the Pizza Hut Book It campaign was in oh, effect. Of course. Because my Cause little... Fat Lacoste. Stuff. Fat Quasto wanted that pizza, wanted that personal pan, and uh, and there were times where I, I would try to read the smallest books possible, and I couldn't f- really find them, so I walked up to her and I said, do you know where I could just find the smallest books? And she was like, don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Uh, I, I was obsessed with... Um this book in the, in the third grade and it mm-hmm. had all the I would loved the stars and like the solar system right and Ooh. it was this big book and it had all it talked about all the stars and the size and I did all my projects on like Jupiter and Saturn and everything but I would always put it back in the wrong place oh. and my teacher Mr. Fee was a giant man just a giant man he always had sweat rings under his shirt Ugh. and he came in the one time he was with just over teaching sh- just oh, over it just over teaching and, and <laughs> waiting I, for his fucking tenure <laughs> Just waiting. Tenure! <laughs> he's got his sword waiting for tenure, and he would come up and he'd be like, Makuga, where is the solar system book? And I would be like, ah! And then he would say, Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Yeah. He's Conan, the librarian. <laughs> God, what, uh, a, what other great quotes? Well, yeah, what so else do we got up there, Alexis? You get to drink from the fire hose! Yeah, another great one where uh, little Joel Miller found the marble in the oatmeal. And yeah. He was a lucky, lucky, lucky little boy because he got to. You get to drink from the fire hose! Dude, the, 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 just the sheer absurdity of that show yeah. is amazing. Because you could, that's the thing with this movie is you could take that model of like a double dare or like a family feud of sorts or the, the you know, the in-studio audience and do whatever the hell you wanted. Because, you know, when I was a kid, the fire truck would come around on Christmas time, oh. come around on 4th of July, and they would like blow the horn. And all I ever wanted to do was have the fire guy you go. Get the drink from the fire. Yeah, right. And it's funny you bring up the holidays because um, you know around the holidays the family and I we like to watch a few adult films and usually they uh, they end with a, a really great quote. You get to drink from the fire hose. We, oh, my parents aren't watching. Weirdly enough, a bunch of my buddies in high school were volunteer fire department uh, guys, oh. and uh, one night they got drunk and they stole one of the fire trucks and they brought it around from neighborhood to neighborhood and kids would just come out of their house and we'd say. 
You get to drink from the fire hose! <laughs> Yeah, and as a matter of fact, if we're gonna um, talk about firefighters, uh, I actually have, the, I'm the voice of a firefighter in Grand Theft Auto Five. I did not know that. Yeah, and while I was voicing this character, I was supposed to be an angry, mean guy who cussed everyone out. Like, mm. if you if you blow something up in the game, I will show up on the fire truck and I will cuss you out and try to beat you up. Oh, nice. But while I was in the studio, I said, hey guys, I have an idea. Why don't I say this? Alexis. Or not. Oh, uh, did the Sorry, soundboard guys. go down? Yes. Oh, uh, the soundboard went oh, down. Wait, wait, wait. You get to drink I got it. the fire hose. We got it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got next here, Alexis? Hey, these floors Ooh. are dirty as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. <sighs> That's what I, this movie's so blue collar. Yeah. It, it brings out the hero in all of us. That mop is uh, the symbol of a new generation. Mm -hmm. um, Much like Pepsi was. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it is the, the Pepsi of mops. Yeah. Um, it, 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 listen, you kids out there with your Swiffer wet jets mm -mm. and your, and your, you know, your whatever the kids are using, your Clorox wipes and your Boombas yeah. and your Zumbas. Listen, there's nothing that goes better with cleaning floors like some good old fashioned elbow grease and a solid solid mop. Take it from Stanley Spagowski. Sp Stanley Sp Spadowski. Okay? There was too many S's in there. Yeah. You take your mop and you clean the floor. If you go in somewhere and they don't have a nice floor you find your closest janitor and you say to them Hey! These floors are dirty as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore! You're damn right. As yes. a matter of fact I went to the dentist recently and uh, my hygienist was working on the roof of my mouth and everything was ship shape but then apparently she went down to the floor of my mouth and yeah. hey these floors are dirty as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore yeah I gotta floss more uh, hey listen we all have trouble with flossing you just you gotta get on it a little more I was uh, you know I I was in church okay oh, okay. Easter Sunday oh well right mm -hmm. and it just seemed like whoever was running the church Really wasn't doing their job. Your so shoes I went were up, sticky. They were sticky, mm. you know? And I ran up to the priest, interrupted him during his sermon, and I said, Hey! These floors are dirty as hell, and I'm not gonna take it anymore! He is risen! <laughs> he is risen. After that, he did. What do you got? Oh, uh, I, I, I would love to hear another quote. Oh. Just call me Mr. Butterfingers. Yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of times in my life yeah. where I've said that. As a matter of fact, uh, back in college, um, in, in order to be a physical therapist, we had to do gross anatomy, and uh, we had to actually dissect a human cadaver for three huh. months. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we went from head to toe. We opened the body, and I'm going to be honest with you, the uh, the organs are rather slippery. And mm. there was a time I, I picked up the liver, <laughs> and it, uh, it just went right out of my hands onto the floor and just slid across the floor, and everyone was looking at me, and I was just like... Yes. Call me Mr. Butterfingers. Yep. And then I screamed, like Stanley Spadowski. Mop the mop the floor. You scream like, like what? Hey! These floors are dirty as hell, and I'm not gonna take it anymore! Listen, you can't be dropping livers on the floor and no. expect me not to get pissed, Jerry. Poor Alexis is sweating back yeah, there with all these sound bites we gave. We're getting there good. That's yes, right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a very... Uh, I'm an ath I'm athletic, but I'm not exactly what one would call a, a great athlete. Well, the ladies know you're athletic. <laughs> hey, you. Hey. Um, and uh, Alexis gave me the thumbs up on that one. Yeah, I, they know. She's heard stories or something. But um, the um, you know we played a lot of backyard football. Mm. Played a lot of backyard uh, football. That's what Pennsylvanians do, you know. And uh, more than likely, I dropped the pass. And oh, uh, yeah. I just say to my brother, well. Just call me Mr. Butterfingers. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you talk about being an athlete. I wouldn't exactly call myself an athlete, mm -hmm. uh, nor would I call myself very suave in the bedroom. Okay. And there's been times when the lights have gone out where I have maybe been with a, uh, a, a lady caller. And uh, there's been times where I, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought my hands were in the right position, and apparently they were not. She mm. let me know that, and mm. I had to respond with... Just call me Mr. Butterfingers. <laughs> no good. All right, what do we got next? We got something else in there, don't we, Alexis? Wait a minute. You guys aren't from the pizza place. Uh, <laughs> those damn henchmen, dude. God, the henchmen got him, and, and lovable 
green under the what, pink under the ear. What's the thing? I don't know. Uh, green under the eyeballs. Green, green under the eyeballs. Yeah, it's, it's when you sleep too long. You yeah. get the little crispies. He's just, uh, you know, he, he's a little confused. And I, I've been there. I've been there before. Yeah, of course. You know, when I when I was a kid, um, I was just just not I wasn't a great kid and I thought that I was I had a, a report card coming I didn't get good grades my mom's like we're gonna go get pizza and then she took me to a tutor and when I walked into the tutor's place I said Wait a minute you guys aren't from the pizza place right? yeah and you know not to bring it back to the adult film genre but I've watched <laughs> many many a scene in my day where a, young, a, a lovely young lady who appeared to be hungry would open the door and two gentlemen would walk in dressed like they were from a certain pizza delivery place and within five minutes she quickly realized Wait a minute you guys aren't from the pizza place. She, she had a deeper voice. It was more of a baritone. But yeah, she's yeah, a lovely she's lady. A smoker. And you know, it's in my house. We ordered a lot of pizza, but sometimes my parents would say we're ordering pizza, and then a, and the guy from the Chinese delivery would show up, and I would say, "Wait a minute." You guys aren't from the pizza place. And to add to that, there are many, many times in my childhood we would actually order from a place called Little Caesars Pizza. Yeah. But it was so terrible that after I ate it, I was like, "Wait a minute." You guys aren't from the pizza no. place. You know what I mean? Yeah, agreed. Oh. What else we got back there, Alexis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This is one of my favorite. Let me explain this if you haven't seen the movie. <laughs> this is a little Johnny quip. He found this guy. Yeah. During the telethon, you know, telethons have random acts. Mm -hmm. It's just these two guys dressed identical with these plastic noses and plastic hair. And they're just they're holding, like, yeah, just making these noises. And I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in a movie. And I've been impersonating this ever since. Play it for us one more time. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Schmoville, if you're out there and you can and you can rip that sound from this episode and make a ringtone for yourself, congratulations, you just won guilty movie pleasures for this too. I'm it? actually going to make it my ringtone for whenever you text or call. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's a really funny text sound. Could we play that again? I feel like my mom, like she would yell at me, right, when I was a kid, and instead of like answering truthfully, I would just make this sound. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you and I are, are very, very close, and every time we hang out together, uh, basically my brain doesn't even have a train of thought the entire time all I have in my head is... Like, if you're on stage and you get a heckler, all I kind of want to do that I'm going to just go like... <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? We have we have a couple more back there. You're so stupid. <laughs> oh, That's the Cody Hall wheel of fish, fish person. Story of my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what's in the box, if whether it's cardboard or whether it's uh, you know in the adult world. Um, you know. Yeah, it could be something else. Yeah, and then when it's nothing, <sighs> you you just. Stupid. You're so stupid. Yeah. I mean, I, I think back to when I was in second grade and I, I got caught cheating on a spelling test. Mm. And in hindsight, boy, oh boy. Yeah. I felt. Stupid! You're so stupid! The one and only time I ever got suspended from school, I was in uh, the cafeteria and I could stick my hand up the vending machine and oh. steal the bottom rack of chips and sure. cookies. And I got caught, literally red-handed, with it in the vending machine <sighs> and the, the principal just screamed at me. Stupid! You're so stupid! And then my mom and dad screamed. Stupid! You're so stupid! And then we all screamed. <laughs> stupid! You're so stupid! Yep. Nailed so that. Went. Yeah. Well, I think we have, we have one more. Fired again. What is that? Yes! Yes! It's all true! I just don't know it! Fired again. Yes! Yes! It's all true! I just don't know it! Oh, I cut off short. Can't yeah. use that one. Yeah, that, that one's out. I mean, do we have any more do classics? We, do, do we have any left? We, no, that's... That's, hey, that's not a bad that's way to go, to go out. out. Yeah. Not a bad way to go out. Uh, I want to thank you, Johnny, for coming on the show and oh, talking just the you. classic. I, 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 I love you like a brother. You know that. Yes. And I love talking about movies like this. Uh, I will say that my brother and I watch this together, so it's uh, it has a nice little uh, you know, nostalgic for me. A little, really little nostalgia. And uh, I know it does for you. And, guys, if you're younger and you've never seen this movie, go out and watch it because it really, really is a fun time. Thank you, Alexis, for killing it back Alexis, there. Alexis, you're amazing. Awesome with the sound bites. Uh, tell the, uh, the fine folks where they can find you, Johnny. 
Johnny? Uh, at Jay Quasto on Twitter, J-Q-U-A-S-T-O, JLoComedy.com. Of course, every week uh, hosting the DC Movie News Show right here in the Popcorn Talk Network. And also the Wrestling and Padre Slamcast. If you love pro wrestling, if you love laughing, you'll enjoy the show. It's on AfterBuzz TV. And also look us up at Wrestling Buds on Twitter. Yeah, and uh, you guys know where to find me, at Josh Makuga. You know my YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash Between the Sheets TV. I'm just Josh Makuga everywhere, J-O-S-H-M-A-C-U-G-A. That's right. Guys, go out and watch UHF. We'll see you next week when Tiffany Smith comes in to talk 13 going on 30. That Whoa! was her. That was her request. If we <laughs> Thank you guys as always for watching and we'll see you next time. What is your guilty movie pleasure? <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network. We would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. Views expressed here to those of the hosts only, not necessarily, but views of the Popcorn Talk Network for its own interpretation.